Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a long time, but I am hopefully back to stay. I um, had a, a health scare um, a few months ago um, with my heart, and I was I was diagnosed with um, with heart disease, and so it's I've been trying to take it easy and not get too stressed out. So it's um, it's kind of scary. It runs in my family to um, have early heart attacks, and uh, I'm 44, and my mom had her first triple bypass when she was 47. So I've been um, trying to eat better. I, I only have I got had an angiogram done. Let me backtrack um, three months ago, and it showed that I had a 30% blockage in one of my arteries. And four years ago, I had an angiogram, and it didn't show any. It showed that I had slow blood flow through the tiny veins that branch off of the main arteries, and that's called microvascular disease. And so I've been dealing with that since then. And they can't put a stent in those because they're too tiny. Um, but I've been on uh, meds to keep my arteries open and to help me... Um, function better without getting as much oxygenated blood to my heart. So um, a few months ago, I've it kind of felt like it was getting a lot worse. And I was getting out of breath easy. And so I went to the, um, went to my doctor and told him about it. And we did another angiogram. And that's when they um, saw that I had the 30% blockage. And since I didn't have any blockage in the main arteries four years ago, it's a concern that I already have the 30%. So it's kind of scary because, you know, it runs in the family to um, have early heart disease. So anyway, now I'm dealing with that and I'm trying to eat better and keep my cholesterol down. And I'm trying to not get as stressed out. And so I've been pretty much taking it easy the past few months. I've been doing some art. Um, I've been working on these mushrooms. Um, they've taken me a long time. And and that's not because it's taken me a long time to paint them, but that I'm not painting as much as I used to. So I've just been, um, for months, I've been working on these just on and off and recording as I worked on them so that I could make a video for you all. So let me tell you a little bit about this painting. It is on an ampersand gesso board, and I believe it's a 9 by 12 And the finish is smooth, which I'm not used to working on, so it was a little bit of a learning curve. Um, you'll see as I'm trying to paint um, in the mushrooms, like especially around the edges, that I'm kind of, I end up going out of the line, which is fine. Um, but it's because I'm not used to the smoothness of this board and I'm not sure how much I like it um, but it it's definitely ha I have to get used to it but I did do the background with my airbrush and I really loved the smoothness for that this is the first time I've actually done anything with the airbrush I've had it for probably about a year now and this is my first time using it on an actual uh, painting instead of just messing around with it. I've just, I've been, um, a little bit intimidated by it, but once I did this, um, I really fell in love. So I'm going to try it again, maybe with a colored pencil, um, piece, do the, the background. So the airbrush that I'm using is the Neo Iwata, I hope I'm saying that right, Gravity Feed Dual Action Airbrush. And I think that I only paid maybe $30. I'm not sure. I can link it down in the video description. And then I'm using the Wicked Colors uh, Airbrush Paint. It's by Createx. And um, I just, I really like it a lot. So I highly recommend um, if you if you want to try uh, using an airbrush, I highly recommend um, the Neo. 
it is, uh, it's really nice and you don't need an expensive airbrush to do, um, just backgrounds like this, I don't think. So the rest of the painting is done in oils. I, um, almost always use, uh, uh, Windsor and Newton oils. I have a professional grade and I have the stu some student grades and I think they both work fine. I'm using a lot of oranges and yellows in the mushrooms and a lot of them are the cadmiums, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow. Um, I think there's even a cadmium lemon in there that I'm using. And I just love the bright colors of this. I think it's so much fun uh, and, and so relaxing to paint something like this. I normally paint portraits, which you have to be um, so precise, especially when it's something that you're painting um, a portrait of someone. Uh, it, you have to be so precise. But with something like this, um, you can be a little more carefree and um, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to paint exactly, and mine just definitely does not look exactly like my reference photo, which um, is I got from Pixabay, where I get most of my reference photos from. So now I'm moving on to the moss that's on the log. And I have to tell you, I'm not an expert on doing um, like landscape, landscape paintings, anything with trees, um, grasses, leaves. I'm not the greatest at. Um, so I'm by no means an expert at this. This is my first time actually painting a log, and I think the log was the hardest part for me. It was the most stressful. Um, in the end, I thought, you know what, this does not have to be super realistic. Um, so I just had fun with it. So I'm just putting some of the uh, little cracks that are in the log in, and I guess I didn't like that part, so I wiped it out. <laughs> and I'm using my larger brush for this. Um, a lot of my, that's a filbert, and I used filberts a lot in this painting. Um, they're one of my favorites. I use the, um, I like to use the Monarch by Winsor & Newton. Um, they are my favorite, especially when it's paint that's, when I'm painting on such a smooth surface like this. Um, these brushes are soft. Um, they can be used for oil or acrylic. But they're a softer brush. They're not like, um, like the synthetic hog hair that I use for um, my oil paints that's on just canvas. So I even started using some tiny brushes on this, which I really, I don't normally use these small tiny brushes, but um, I had, I whipped them out on this. And as long as you take care of them and wash them out, um, they, they will last you. I'm painting on the moss. The moss was my favorite part. I thought it was so pretty. Um, all the different greens and the yellows. And I'm blocking in the deeper colors right now. And then I'll go back in with some lighter 
some lighter greens. But it was a lot of dabs and I, I didn't keep my paintbrush just one way, I turned a different direction so that they all didn't look the same. And here I'm putting in some darker, and that's not just black, it's black with um, blue in it and sometimes some, uh, some red, purples. When I was in school, I used a lot of black in my paint, and I would use my black to make my colors darker. This is when I was in college and I was just started painting. And my painting instructor told me no more black. She wanted me to not use black anymore at all. And so I stopped completely. And my paintings became so much more vibrant. Um, I had to do my thesis shortly after that. And since I was a, I was a graphic design major and a painting I, fine arts was my other major with um, um, concentration in painting and so I had to make three large paintings and not use any black and I had to just kind of figure out on my own you know how to make it work and they ended up just becoming really beautiful I really love them so I really have not used black in my paintings until recently. I started mixing it in just with um, and my and just what if I mixed it with like a with blues or with purples, reds, just not by itself. And you'll get a deeper color that way. But before, um, the only black I didn't, the, the closest to black I would use is Payne's Gray. And in, in my portraits, I still don't use black. Unless it's on their clothing. I did end up using um, some a portrait I'm doing at the moment, I ended up using some black and blue in their um, clothing because they had dark suits on. But other than that, I do try to avoid it when I do portraits. You can make your own blacks. And my log is starting to come along. I'm starting to um, be a little happier with it. And it's starting to become a little more fun to paint. This is when, when things are starting to go, you know, your way when you're painting. That's when it starts to um, really be, you know, become a lot more enjoyable. I'm just putting in some last details. I'm doing a little dry brushing here on the log. And dry brushing is when you just have a little bit of paint on your brush um, and your brush is pretty is dry um, and it goes on kind of um, just goes on a little bit and you can see through to the layer below. I kind of like, it's called like uh, scumbling is another word for it. Oh, 
putting a stem on that mushroom back there that I totally forgot about. So now I'm putting on the little highlights on the mushrooms and finishing up all the little details. This was such a fun painting to do. I really enjoyed it. I even enjoyed painting the log. I'm happy with how it turned out and it's not perfect, but I learned a lot along the way and I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss another video. Thank you and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.